Welcome and thanks for logging on to WYCC.org for In the Loop, the after show. Joining us today are our guests, author and commentator Arsalan Iftikhar, editor of the Chicago Daily Law Bulletin, Pat Milheiser, and news anchor and journalist Robin Robinson. Hello again. Thank you for joining us. Our pleasure. This week we learned that a major drugstore chain, CVS, will stop selling tobacco products by October 1st of this year. Arsalan, is it, is it a hypocritical for a drugstore slash healthcare chain to sell tobacco products? Not any more than it is for a pharmacy like CVS to sell alcohol, um, which they continue to do uh, as well. I am not opposed at all to CVS stopping to sell tobacco products, and I hope the next step that they take is to take the beer uh, out of their refrigerators as well. So. I see it as uh, being consistent with their mission and values. Robin, good idea? I'm thinking, I was thinking the same thing, that there are a lot of things that are on the shelves in stores and people want choices, and but removing the cigarettes themselves, they said one thing that cigarettes on the shelf when you go in to buy a gallon of milk, if you've just quit smoking and you see those cigarettes there, then you might say, you know, and while I'm here, I just think I'll, I just I'll buy that pack and smoke one and throw it away, and there you are back again on the path. Of, but by of that addiction. logic, aren't they going to start now asking to get the soda off the shelves too? Yeah, I, they should. <laughs> well, <laughs> Why not? I think, I think the idea is that um, you know, do are there smokers in moderation? You know, I, I think it's something. I think that you know, you can use junk food or you can drink alcohol in moderation, but can you really smoke in moderation? And I think as they're trying to turn with with Obamacare coming online, and they're trying to be more of a you know, think of them as a healthcare clinic. Go there to get well. I, I think um, I, I think it's a good move to to, to start b getting, and also they're going to lose about two billion dollars. But I think they're going to try to recoup that and and have them CVS be the place you think of when you get a cold. President Obama said this will have a profoundly positive impact on the country. But won't people just find other places to buy their cigarettes, like Walgreens? Walgreens, though, has been cons looking at this for some time, and I wouldn't be surprised with all the positive publicity that CVS has received. I wouldn't be surprised to see Walgreens follow suit because it's not a big portion of their bottom line. You say they're going to lose two billion a year, but that I think it's that's about one percent, less than two yeah, percent, exactly. Yeah, right. So that's it's not the, it's not their big you know draw. However, people may you know need other things and saying while I'm there I can get them cigarettes, and if they can't, maybe they'll go to Walgreens for that. But I think it remains to be seen. I think at some point you're only going to be able to get cigarettes from like a cigarette kiosk. Uh, maybe they'll start selling them you know through the mails because smokers are also feeling more and more vilified and embarrassed about the fact that they're engaged in this in this horrible habit and uh, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll come in a brown paper bag like the old smut magazines used to. <laughs> and I, I don't think gas stations and the 7-elevens of the world are, are going to go out of this business. I, I really think it's more of a you know a, a branding thing. They want to be known um, for health care and, and wellness and I think they see cigarettes as kind of flying in the face of that mission. You think other Pharmacies will test the waters here, and if they do get a positive response, this could become a trend. Yeah, I agree with Robin. I think that um, Walgreens and other national retail chains uh, will see the effect that CVS has. I mean, they're getting a lot of pu positive publicity from this uh, decision, and so I, I think that a lot of them will t will follow suit. Well, okay. you can buy cigarettes at, at Jewel. Uh, and well, it used to be Dominic's, not anymore in Chicago, <laughs> yeah. but not at Whole Foods. I mean, I think there is there is a, a conscious decision of whether or not to sell tobacco. And all these products. things do seem to be having a cumulative effect. If you look at smoking in the United States, it is on a steep, steep decline. It may, it may have leveled off a bit, but worldwide, it's uh, it's not on a decline. And so the cigarette manufacturers, you know, you can you can buy Marlboro all over the all over the world, and in developing countries, smoking is 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 very high. Uh, we, the more educated you are, apparently the less likely you are to smoke, and so we're down to what, about 20% from 42% you know, uh, year, decades ago, but maybe leveling off a bit. So maybe those 20% of the hardcore that just can't manage to quit or don't want to. We had some big news uh, this week. Uh, the independent prosecutor, Dan Webb, released his long-awaited report on the, uh, the Koshman case, and basic finding is that Mayor Daley and his staff uh, were not involved directly and uh, no direct clout could be found. At the same time, there were other interesting things, such as the mayor actually knew about this incident weeks before the lead detective. Robin, what's your thought on that? Well, of course he knew about it. Don't you think that if your <laughs> nephew was, uh, was killed someone in a fight, whatever the situation was, that your sister or brother, whoever's parent Well, that's was, not the surprising thing. The surprising thing is that the detective didn't know about it. Oh wow! But didn't didn't know that it was Mayor Daly's nephew, or didn't know that it happened. Didn't you know, know that it I happened, mean, but yeah. I I I would think that if 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 someone says I didn't know my nephew was involved in that, that they're either their family's not very close, <laughs> or there's somebody's not being completely truthful. So I'm not surprised at all that that mayor. Of course he knows. He's not just the mayor. He's some someone's uncle. 
you know, father, son, brother. And, and from a media standpoint, the, the report was kind of a dud in, in that it didn't have, you know, uh, that big kind of smoking gun. And, and, and there's no more criminal charges going to be coming out of this. None of the uh, police officers who handled it or, or the assistant state's attorneys are going to face any criminal action. Um, you know, I think, uh, I think it's a situation where um, you, you, you have the, the, the Van Eckel pled guilty and he's going to do his time. It's, it's 60 two days. 60 days and, and, you know, whatever you think about it, I, I think it's a, it's a tragic case for, for both the Kochmans um, and the Dailies. Um, certainly uh, for, for the mother, she lost her son. Um, you know, for, for Van Eckel, um, you know, he, this, he obviously did not mean to kill him, uh, whatever happened there. Um, and, uh, and, and I think it's just, it's just sad all along. And I think, I think it took too long to get to this result that we have. Um, but I, I think we have reached uh, the right result. When you look at this, though, you look at the missing police reports, some of the missing files that were thrown away. I mean, are we to believe the state's attorney's office and the police department is this sloppy? It's either the Keystone cops or corrupt Chicago law enforcement. It's, it really, there really is no in between, uh, and so I think the report in that it is that is the smoking gun. Is that either it was handled so poorly or it was intentionally covered up, and you know, and there's just not enough evidence left to uh, to charge anyone. And I do think it leaves a bad taste in the mouth of, of people who say, you know what, you know. He should get the same treatment as, as my son would have gotten had he done the same thing. And I think that is, that's a problem for, for, for public trust. And, and I guess where I say that it, w it was a dud in, in the media standpoint is because it, it didn't reach either one of those conclusions. Mm -hmm. There was not an opinion as to whether it was incompetence or intentional. So we're just kind of left uh, to wonder and, and everybody read the report and draw your own conclusions. Well, uh, yeah. the victim's mother certainly thinks that she's due an apology. And there was the hint that maybe the feds should uh, reinvestigate. I'm sure that at this point, that Vaneco wishes he had just taken his medicine that month, that week, gotten it, you know, if he could have gotten, you know, a manslaughter charge, gotten it over with, you know, stood up and said, this is what happened. It would all be over with by now. Instead, it has, it has continued to haunt all parties involved. It's dragged on. We'll mm -hmm. leave it there. Our salon at the car, Pat Milheiser, Robin Robinson, we thank you. Until next time, goodbye. Good night.